set both audio tracks to mono using the right track. Then I add a dynamics preset, which includes a compressor and a limiter. Then I add seven decibels of gain and finally go to the master clip to add a Lumetri LUT for color correction. Okay, that was pretty fast, so I'm just gonna pause the video here for a moment. I hope you see the value now in using scripts and macros to automate your workflow, because that would have taken a lot longer to do manually. If you don't want an in-depth explanation, you can just skip to the next chapter where the edit continues, but I'm gonna rewind here and just explain each one of those tricks. First up, we have the Mono Maker, programmed in Auto Hotkey, of course, and also launched with a single button on my secondary keyboard, or primary keyboard, what it does is it opens up the Modify Clip menu and waits for the color of the OK button to appear so that it knows the panel is loaded. And then according to whatever parameter you gave it, it will check either the left or the right checkboxes on both rows using the colors of the boxes themselves to determine whether or not there is a check mark already in that box. And then it presses OK to accept that, and now we have the left and the right track using the same audio. Because basically how we film is we put the gain a little bit higher on one of the tracks just so that we have some more dynamic range in case there's clipping. This next auto hotkey script you're going to see me using constantly throughout the entire video. It's my script to apply any given preset onto any clip or group of clips using a single keyboard shortcut. What it does is it uses Premiere's built-in shortcuts to highlight the effects panel, another built-in shortcut to highlight the find box of the effects panel, now it takes note of the position of the caret, which is the blinking vertical line, then it selects and deletes any text that might already be in the find box, and it then inserts the text that I want, which in this case is 2.4 limiter. So that will search for the preset and bring it up to the top, where now the cursor is able to move down and to the right, click on that preset and drag it back to the cursor's original coordinates, thus applying that preset onto whatever clip your cursor was hovering over. It does all this within half a second, and every time I use it, it saves something like five seconds, which adds up enormously over the course of a day. Little side note here, obviously there's no shortcut inside of Premiere to do this for you, because otherwise I would just use that. I've been bugging the Adobe guys to put this in the program for real for maybe two years now, but until they do, everyone else is stuck doing this manually every single time, which is ugh, just horrible. This next script is really simple. All it does is press F2 to open the audio gain panel, type in 7 to add 7 gain, and then it presses Enter to apply. And then we have to wait for the little loading bar because Premiere is really slow when calculating gain for some reason. And then as we're waiting in eternity for that loading bar to finish, I go up here to the master clip of the A-roll, and then I use my preset application script again, this time to apply the LTT color preset, which is a Lumetri color effect that uses Brandon's specially created LUT, designed for our set with our lighting. So now the color correction for the A-roll needs no further tweaks. Okay, here we have another auto hotkey script. This is the, well, right click playhead mod, as you can see. And basically, it just allows me to click anywhere on the timeline in order to move the playhead. The standard procedure is having to click all the way up there at the very top of the timeline where all those numbers are. It leads to you accidentally entering different sequences and clicking on markers and stuff. And it's just not as good because you don't have as much of an area to click on. So basically how this works is, in Premiere, when I right-click, it looks at the exact color underneath the cursor. And if it finds a known color of the timeline, AutoHotKey will fire a keystroke, in this case, backslash, which in Premiere has been mapped to the command, move playhead to cursor. The upshot of all of this is that I can right-click on any blank part of the timeline, and the playhead will move to that location. The unboxing experience really hasn't changed a lot since the original Razer Blade 14. In fact, not much has changed outwardly about the machine either, aside from the textured LTT design by Ed. Pausing a moment here to explain one more auto hotkey script. This is my instant application switcher script, which works using single button presses. That says Control F4, but it's actually triggered by the 15th macro button on my Logitech G15 keyboard, so it's one key press only. I have five keys in total, all with their own dedicated applications. They're extremely close to my left hand, so that my pinky or ring finger can press any of them at any time. And pressing one of these keys will instantaneously activate the latest active window of that particular program.
program. So even if I have 10 Explorer windows open, it will always open the latest one. And this is incredibly useful when I'm trying to move files around. You will see me using this constantly throughout the entire video, and it is by far the best thing I've ever scripted. I highly recommend that you get this for yourself. And I have a 10 minute long video linked in the description, which shows exactly how to set this all up. It's quite easy and will save you an enormous amount of time.